seems like we're pushing to come up with an interim position. Maybe we're pushing too fast, too hard. I mean, we've got two deputies. John said he's still going to stay and help us as far as keeping everything in order as far as the um, payroll. Um, Mike already does the inspections. I, I think that we have all the aspects covered. You know, currently, because we already have, well, I mean, we've got two captains here, two deputies. I mean, I think we can hold it together and we can come up with a, a smooth plan so that we eliminate what I think is happening. I think there's some bantering, and I just, you know, I'd rather not see that happen. I was a member of the fire department. I've worked with all of you people. I don't think we had any problems. Everyone gets along. Everyone's friends. Let's try and work it out, and maybe the candidate is within the fire department. If not, you guys will, you know, be able to come back to us, tell us what you think is the important parts that we have to have. I mean, we know what the the funding is. That's already been voted at town meeting, so it's not like we can play around with that. So somehow we have to keep the fire department going. I mean, the board of engineers and John, they gave us, as you pointed out, a reasonable cost fire department, you know, and that's what we're looking for to continue to give the town, at least from my aspect. I can't talk for Betty and, and Joe, but I mean, that's my thought. And just let me know what you think. Is this something you think is a reasonable plan? How do you guys feel about that? I mean, do you want to chime in individually? Um, you know, just be honest with us. Uh, I know you are, but uh, we all care about the department. We want to see harmony and we want to see a productive process. Can you work together in a meeting? Absolutely. And come up with viable solutions because at the end of the day, the biggest problem we have is we have the authority, but we don't have the expertise. And so we don't want to Mickey Mouse this operation either. We, we need to get some good advice from the people that know. I'm curious, uh, Don, you mentioned uh, you know having it be basically a <coughs> team, if you will. Uh, you, do you still then, then you'd still come back to us. Well, yeah, but uh, I, I mean, I'd be happy to sit in on it too. Yeah. Um, you know. Well, I guess what I'm getting at is you mentioned bringing in a, a, a team of, of out of town chiefs. Well, here's the thing. I mean, if uh, if we were to put this out and post it, and it went out nationwide, and we end up with 500 resumes coming back for somebody that wants to work 10 or 12 hours a week, <laughs> you know, um, you know, then. I would say that, yes, the easiest way to get through all that would be if we had some chiefs from the other towns or, you know, because like John said, he sat in on some of those before. Well, I get what I'm asking is, are you still envisioning that process or would you well, like to you do you guys may else? come back to us. You say, here's, here's what we see is the important things. Here's where we, we feel that these are definite things that, you know, somebody should have in their toolbox as far as things they you know, they have a knowledge or criteria, you know, EMTs. I know Betty still thinks that the EMT part 
is important. And like I said, I know that I require, as a first responder, you know, for our department, actually is really all that we were ever required to have. You know, so again, are we growing to, to something that we shouldn't be? We have an ambulance service. I mean, you know, and I know the police department also goes to the calls. I mean, so at what point are we overkilling it and, you know, expecting too much out of a department that's called? as opposed to one that's full time, you know, with the police department. So, you know, I just think you guys could hash that out, work together, and you probably will come back to us in a short period of time and say, we, we think that you should probably go with this person, or we think this is the criteria that you should put on your posting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know that we need to go to a nationwide search, you know. Well, I would agree. But, are we going to post things, um, <clears throat> this job uh, outside the department or just within the department? Well, that's what I'm saying. If, if the four of you get together and, and talk out, you know, here's what we have on the department, here's what we have for people, here's what we should be covering. I mean, this person may not be able to do a financial part of, you know, the job. This one has all this criteria that they can do. This one doesn't have this. No one has the EMT if we're thinking of these people or this person does, you know, whatever. I mean, it's just what is going to be good for the department. You guys are part of the department. You guys are there. You know, you are the ones that have to get along with the outcome of it. And the town is the one that suffers if we don't go the right route. So we're not looking to make the town suffer because we, we did this and this person or the people that we went with can't do it, you know. I mean, I know there's software programs that would probably cover a lot of the paperwork part of it, but again, that's money. I don't know if it's within the budget to cover it, but you guys collectively talking, you may have a good idea. Betty, what's, what's your thought? Well, I had no idea what Donnie was going to suggest. I really didn't know. We like to look at everything as the glass half full. Um, everybody that's going to serve on this group, it appears, wants to be the chief. I, I don't see how that can work. <laughs> I really don't. I don't. See, I don't see that working at all. Um, and I know you're all educated and sensible, but if you really want something, now you're going to be lobbying the other guys go with me, I think we, we would be asking for trouble doing it that way. And, hey Bob, can I just finish? Oh, yeah. That? yeah, thank you. No, I just, and that all day today I was thinking about surrounding areas and chiefs that might come in here, who better than fire chiefs to know what a community needs. Um, I know firefighters in Newburyport, I don't know who the chief is in Georgetown. If, if I'd had more time today, I would have been making some calls just to make some inquiries. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's not going to be a cast of thousands for 14, 15, 16 hours. Um, you know, it, it has worked in the past. Um, I'd like to hear from John, the chief, chief right now. On this side. And I don't mean to put you on the spot, but you are the leader of the fire department. <coughs> Maybe we should. Were they doing that in the same room? No, the, the guns are all front, I think. <laughs> we should pause the media. Be
uh, I have to agree with uh, uh, Betty. Um, I, I think it would be quite unfair to have four people go into a ring and see who comes out alive. Because that's essentially what it would be. be abuse of one's uh, connections within the department, influencing, you know, a favorable uh, action on the part of some of the men, and I, I just, I, I don't, I, I don't think it's a good way to go. Uh, nice thought, good suggestion, I just, I don't think it's what you want to do. As far as advertising the position, personally, I want to see someone from the, within the department have that position. Uh, it, it, the, the intent of the, the, uh, the posting was not to go outside the department. Uh, we have capable personnel within the department. It may take some time, like any new chief, it takes time to get up to speed. We understand that. You try to go with your best talent and, uh, and make the right choice. I think that choice has to be made by someone other than the four candidates or more. It might be more than that. They wouldn't be making the choice. They would be coming back to us, you know, suggesting whether or not they had somebody with them to work it out, to beat it. I mean, then, but it would be one of them, and they'd be, you know, they'd be. I don't want to say arguing, but they would be negotiating amongst themselves. I don't. I've never heard of any type of a uh, interview process uh, ever. I mean, I don't take prospective employees. And uh, put them on the room and say, "Okay, who comes out the winner? That's the guy I'm going to hire." And that's not how it's done. Uh, so I, I, I just don't think it's a good idea. Uh, now the other process, you can streamline it, make it a little bit simpler. Uh, but you know, who's going to ultimately make the appointment? We yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Stand up, and make that point. Do it yourself, and live by it. It'll be your choice. We can recommend, or I can recommend, four, four people right now, tonight, as to who the candidate should be. But ultimately, you're going to pick, you're gonna pick one. You're going to pick one. Don't put them in an arena where they're, they're battling amongst themselves. Thank you. Look at what the candidate's background consists of, you know, both experience, education. Um, look at all the pluses and minuses that this <coughs> party brings. Make a value judgment. I'll help you with that in the most honest way I can. And you'd be surprised at how I look at all four candidates I see right now. It's not all one way, all the other. I'm very open minded. And I want to see what's in the best interest of this community. That's the way I always operate it. And I like to see it continue that way. You know, I believe the fire chief in this type of a situation, with that type of a monetary structure, has got to do it for some reason other than his own benefit. He's giving himself to the town. So I looked at that and I, and I put a very high rating on that aspect of it. Whether the person is an EMT or not, or is the, the most talented person on paper or not, he has to dedicate his life to this town. And that's the way it's always been. It may change in the future. It may. If you have a full-time chief, a salaried person, uh, making some serious dollars, uh, the sacrifice is a little bit different. Right? He's being compensated. Uh, you know, most of the fight chiefs around here are six, six digit figures. Right? So, we're obviously not anything like that, so we don't compare ourselves to that. We do it as a call to volunteer uh, chief. That's the way we operate. I'd like to see that the budget may be maintained. I, I, I'm proud of the fact that, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that we have have done such a good job with so little money. I mean, it's got to be a model for a lot of other communities. And to think that we're gonna, we would like to rush into, rush into changing this. I said, why would you want to change something that isn't broken? You know, so I'm looking to have that continue. Now there's plenty of ideas. Hey, we can do this better, we can do that better, we can do this, that, and the other thing. But I'll tell you something, it costs money. <coughs> we all know that. 
we can have a department like all the others. Just throw some money into it. All right? We've always managed to get by the bare bone minimum. That's what I thought my job was to maintain that. Right? So I don't want to see that go the other way, hire something from the outside with all these brilliant ideas right. and say, okay, you guys need for this fire, you know, this type of fire truck, you need four permanent, let's get a man. You know, you know where that's going. You know where it's going. Okay? Right. I, I don't think that's necessary for this town. You know? But what you do need is you've got to continue uh, you know, working with volunteers, essentially, that want to do this. When they stop wanting to do this, you have no choice. Right? So I, I believe the decision that you make is going to have to be one that's going to help preserve what we have. Tough choice. Tough decision. But you know, that, that's, that's my spiel. And uh, my other concern is not so much this, as of May 31st at midnight, you don't have a fire chief. You really do need to establish that continuity in the interim fire chief. I, and I don't believe that that was really addressed up to this point in time. Was it? Are we talking about making a permanent appoint appointment by June 1st? I don't think, I don't, I don't see that happening. No, I don't either. I, no, I don't either. I don't see that happening that yeah. I mean, I think you're going to have to do something that, on an interim basis. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, I think we discussed that with the fire engineers. Right, but we, we met with them a couple of, three weeks ago. But we get a couple of issues. I didn't want to diverse, but I, just, I want to make sure that before we leave tonight, <laughs> we have... We have a plan. <laughs> I mean, that's right. You do need something on June 1st. You need a fire chief. Uh, interim fire chief. I think we all thought that that was what we wanted to do, an interim, carry it. And that will give you some time to think about who you want to put in that position on a permanent basis. And so, you know, I'm not, I'm not telling you that, you know, let's, let's find out, let, let's establish now who's going to be the, the next chief. I'm not saying that. Just get somebody in there that just work with me for a couple of months. We don't need uh, to in rush into that next step. Uh, we have know? interim and we have people willing to work with whomever that would be. Mm -hmm. We want to and I, it's, I believe everybody here has the right reasons for coming here tonight. <clears throat> the thing that, that I have a little problem with is if we bring in uh, you know, an, another entity that comes on board as an interim, uh, on an interim position, and then starts to initiate a lot of changes, yeah. that's going to be very disruptive, I'm telling you. I think we'd have to be clear. We're yeah, not think, about yeah. to make humongous yeah. changes. We just, Steady the ship until we get the right person. That's right. Is that and then when that, that person goes, <laughs> let them do what, do what they want to do with the department right. and move forward. But just to get us through the fiscal year, I think it's, you know. And to keep, keep the morale simple. up, too. To Absolutely. keep everybody um, focused on, on why they want to be a firefighter mm. and the community they live in. And we know it's a bargain. Mm. Okay, well, Bob had his Bob hand up. I don't need to. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just a couple of comments. And, uh, I'll state the obvious first. And it's already been said that we all are here uh, for the same reason. Uh, it's because we do care. Uh, we care about the town. We care about the department. If I understood Donnie's suggestion, it was for the four of us to work together. The four of us are all reasonable people. And we already work together um, quite often, actually to ask us to better define the role um, is work that we're capable of doing. I don't think the suggestion was for us to be involved in the selection process because that's, that wouldn't be our charge. Our charge would be to better define the role for the fire chief in the town of Berlin. And once, because we're talking about selecting, we're talking about posting, we're talking about all these things that are well ahead of, we haven't clearly defined the role yet. And I think that's the work that needs to be done. Um, I don't think you should rush into that. I think you, know, you have an interim chief, then you have time to figure it out and, and create a, a job description that makes sense to the department and it makes sense to the board of staff. <coughs> this is not a, it's not a budget issue. It's not about changing anything. It's about tomorrow, what do you want the fire chief to be responsible for? <coughs> and what are those duties? What are those essential functions? And, but honestly, now that the board has the, the, you know, 
I, I would expect the board to supervise the fire chief closely. So you'd have to have some really um, closely defined duties so that you could evaluate against. Um, not lofty theory, but you know, bulleted items as to what it is you want the chief to do. And, and I think the four of us can create that document. There's a lot of advice out there. A lot of it is boilerplate you can pull down, but a lot of it is really um, community specific. And, and in this department, the way we operate with you know, the personnel we have, the equipment we have, the stations we have, um, I think that deserves uh, some due diligence. And I don't think you can rush into it. I think you need to sit down. Um, I do think the four of us can work together. I think we can. I, I think we can reach consensus as to what that job description looks like. Um, personally, I don't see an issue with the four of us working together to get that done. And if I understood what I suggested, that's the charge. Come back with a job description that you now know, once you know what it is you want the person to do, then you start to look at the qualifications to do that work. And some of them, are, as everybody stated, they're fairly obvious. If you look at the fire department and fire department, they're fairly standard. So that's not the hard work. The hard work is to customize it to the town of Rosewood. I don't see this a long process. I see a few meetings. And uh, I think the only other thing that I'm thinking is to understand what all the roles that you have to do. I mean, I'm looking at what John gave us the other day. I mean, it doesn't really give specific information as to what the role is. And who knows, maybe somebody that's interested now wouldn't be if they knew all the criteria that they had to do and what the commitment is and, and the time frame that it takes to do all the work. Because I agree with John. I didn't get on the fire department not to volunteer to do a lot of things. I mean, I, I did a lot of things that were in on the clock. Um, you know, we did a lot of town events. We did bonfires. We did, you know, all the things that we did for the community. We didn't do it for ourselves. We did it because we're part of the community and we wanted to be a part of it. And it shows that the fire department's there for the community. I mean, that, those are the things that that I was a part of, you know. So, I mean, I'm just more so thinking that whoever it is that's interested in the job really needs to know what all the, everything that they have to do. And I agree, it's probably one of the four people in the room that would be the person. I mean, you know, maybe there's other ones that, you know, John's thinking that are qualified as well. There probably are. I know that a lot of the guys have gone to a lot of training, so. You know, there's probably a lot more people than we even think that would be interested in it. So, but at the same time, it would be nice to know more specifically what needs to be, you know, done in the role. I mean, yeah, you can go to the Mass General laws and read the requirements, but they're pretty vague, you know. So, and I agree, John's going to probably have to be, you know, pointing out a lot of the job that you guys have no idea what was involved in it, nor would we. I mean, he did it every day. It was his job. So. Yeah, I just, I basically Bobby said a while ago, I was going to say, I think to characterize us, the four of us that are going into a room and, and having a, um, a fight, it's unrealistic. I mean, we've known each other for at least 18, 20 years. We're not going to, we're not going to do that. And I think we're all reasonable. So that's basically what Bobby had said too, and I just wanted to reiterate that that you know we're here for the the good of the department, the good of the town, um, because if we weren't interested, we'd just throw up our hands and say, you know, do whatever you want. And we'll, wherever the cards fall, we'll we'll pick them up. But uh, we're here. We want to be active, be involved. I think we can do a good job. I wanted to introduce a third idea, if I could. Um, Respect my colleagues who are trying to think outside the box, and I don't think we're, I can speak, I think for all of us, we're not afraid to make a decision, we just want to make the right one. And we need a little guidance, we need a little expertise. So let me introduce a, a, another idea, again, and this is just for discussion. Um, right now, John, uh, you're in charge of the department. You're the chief. It doesn't matter how many days we have left, you are in charge of this department. So, uh, my thought is this. Um, <coughs> It seems to me that you should exercise your authority, your leadership, at this hour, 
at this moment and guide us as to what the next step should be. So, for example, if you feel that it would be necessary to engage with your colleagues to finalize the job description, that should be your prerogative. We're looking for a job description. How you come up with it should be something that you generate by yourself or within the department through your own leadership and through the leadership of the department so that you satisfy our need and that is this is our expert opinion or this is my expert opinion here's the job description secondly we can't a completely different subject altogether is uh, the appointment of the interim chief and, and it shouldn't be and I do not believe that there's anybody in this room that would feel that that would be a political appointment and that the interim chief would have an upper hand or a lower hand if he gets the job or doesn't get the job for 30 to 60 days. So I think that the interim chief should be selected by you. You're an authority to do that. And my recommendation, it would be as seamless as possible. Someone that we don't have to train. We've got a payroll coming up May 31st. I know that the school system needs to be uh, inspected. Things have to be done. I don't know all the details of what needs to be done, but I would ask you to exercise your leadership and provide us with the assistance that we need to move forward. So the most immediate thing is a job description. Now, you might take 60 days to produce one, or 30 <coughs> days, or three days, or have it done tonight. And then I would suggest that tonight you make a recommendation, a strong recommendation, if you're prepared to do that, as to who the interim chief is, strictly for procedural purposes. This is not in a political appointment or someone that is hand-picked for any thing other than to make sure that the department is running smoothly and seamlessly to take care of payroll, any emergencies and inspections in the next 30 days. What are your thoughts? Um, the uh, first issue brought with the uh, committee. Um, I am uh, not opposed to having my current staff sit down and uh, put together what they feel the chief duty should be. I think I would have to be part of that committee because there are a lot of things that they may not realize that I do that they really should be, you know, put, in, put that into the, uh, the, the, the job description. But what I was reacting to was the, ultimately what you said, have the committee come back and make a recommendation as to who's going to be the next chief. That's I, said, I said they could, in fact, from the discussions, uh -huh. come back and say, you know, collectively, we yeah. thought this person yeah. would be the best choice. Well, I think that's, you don't want to go there. Put the job description together with these folks. They know the town. They know what we need to do. They know how to get the job done. Not all the jobs, uh, but each person would bring something to that committee. But to ask them, okay, now let's pick someone, I think, no. don't, let's not go there. But just, I'm just saying, in the discussion, <laughs> from working as a group, they may all of a sudden say, you know what? We think this would be, in our, from our standpoint, we would hope that you would pick this person. You know, you never know. That could happen. Okay. It may not. I mean, I see what you're saying. That's fair enough. Anyone can do that. Right. Um, if, if, no, I'm if just they, saying. If it, they it so happen. feel that, that, if they feel that way and they want to right. uh, submit that information either to me or to the board of select, that's fine. That's their prerogative. They can do that. But I don't think that should be their mission. <coughs> no, it, it should not be real. their mission because they go in and start tailoring the, the, the work, uh, the job description around their best capabilities. You know, we don't want to see that. Exactly. Okay. That's why I thought if four people were involved, mm -hmm. it would be kind of hard, mm -hmm. you know, for someone to just tailor it to themselves. So let's, let's consider that. Let's, let's committee to put together the, the job description, mm -hmm. which is fine, all right? And then bring that back to the board. And can I suggest that you do that within your own line mm -hmm. and staff and command, not that it's a special charge from us. Absolutely. That's All right, we'll do that. Um, <laughs> now, as far as the, um, the appointment of the interim chief, we need someone that has the um, legal uh, responsibility to sign off and be the representative of this community within the state statutes. We need that. Um, that's that legal entity. Um, what I'm not looking for from this point on until June 1st, or actually July 1st, if I stay on as the clerk, I'm not looking for someone to come in to reinvent the wheel while that period of time is ongoing. Right? Uh, you know, coming in the office and say, well, we've got to throw this stuff away, we've got to throw that away. I'm going to say, wait a minute, I still need some of these things. You know? They don't, or the new guy won't, and 
by all means, clean out the office, you know. But let's not do that while I'm sitting there trying to get the books and all this other stuff going at the end of the year. So I need, I need something that's consistent with what we've been doing. You know? um, and uh, I believe we, we have that in place now. And uh, the smoothest transition uh, would be, which I had always, already made the recommendation, and uh, if I have to make the appointment this evening, um, and my appoint, I would appoint uh, Deputy Captain Ellis as the interim chief. We work directly in those aspects of the job that become legal. Signing <coughs> permits, doing inspections, working together uh, to serve the community outside of the department. Uh, but that, would, to me, makes the most sense. Uh, I don't see that as being politically motivated in any way. I don't think that gives uh, the deputy a leg up on anything because he's going to be busy doing the same things he was doing. Uh, if he were to come in and start renovating things, I'd be shocked. Uh, that's not what we want to do. We don't want to change the department, you know, during this period of time. And I, and I, I trust that uh, Mike Captain Ellis would not do that. He'd, I'm, I'm very confident he'd work with me doing what we're doing, and which, which is very effective. Mike does a great job, and we've worked very well together for the past 15 years. You can't ask for anything to be smoother than that. Uh, if you brought somebody in who was totally neutral, you know, wouldn't know how to do the job. Uh, so I'm not going to teach somebody how to do something in this, in this short period of time. So it's just the least disruptive uh, appointment uh, that I can think of that, uh, that would work for this community. So if, if you're asking me to make that appointment this evening, I will do so. Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, perhaps Tony Betty can help you with this as well. I know that the town had uh, indicated uh, the desire through vote to um, change over from a four to five engineers to strong chief. And um, of course, we're going to continue in the tradition that the Board of Selectmen has appointing authority of the chief. Do you believe that you have appointing authority for the interim chief? No. Okay. All right. So my next question is, Mike, would you accept that position? Yes. As interim chief? So now we have something to either establish consensus or vote on to my colleagues. I remember sitting here when one night with the Board of Fire Engineers when they were um, about to disband or whatever happened. And um, Kermit was there, Brock Dower was here. Um, Eddie Watson was here, and I don't know if Mr. Judson was here. No. Is Carl Judson? Is, yeah, he's he on the engineers, right? Yeah. He wasn't here. Was, were there only three engineers here that night? Yeah, four. And John, the chief, John, yeah. and the chief, right? Okay. Now, at that time, the engineers talked about interim chief. Kermit declined. I think Rock declined. I think Rock might have asked Eddie Watson if he would do it. Is Eddie Watson, Watson somebody that's, that has the capabilities to be the interim chief? I that don't was, know what Eddie has for background. That, that was uh, based solely on uh, an age issue. It was? Right. Okay. Was that what that was about? Okay. Right. He was still under 65 before the board could appoint him. Okay. The chief had to be on the board. Okay. He was the only under 65. I think he was the only member under 65. So. Really? <laughs> yeah, all the books so, though, yeah. <laughs> Um. So we'll be asking if, if he was a viable option. If, if he were. <coughs> so, you know, I, I know the chief would like to see Mike because Mike does inspections and they kind of work hand in hand. Uh, and there are things that come up at the end of the year or the beginning of the new fiscal year that have to be in place, signed off or on or whatever, make sure there's no violations in any of the buildings. So. Um, that that was my um, inquiry at this time. So that's that's your recommendation, Chief. Yes. That might might become the interim chief. And I don't see that particular um, position of acting chief 
been going on it for an extended period of time. I think the committee, <coughs> the, the uh, job description, bring it to the selectmen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd like Sorry. to make note of Brian Graney being here tonight, too, because I hear all good things about you. I'm glad Thank you came in. Thank you. Well, I'd like to make a motion to accept the um, recommendation of the chief uh, to appoint on an interim basis Michael Castronellis as chief. And um, if I have, if we have a second, uh, we'll, we can open up for discussion and then vote. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I'd like to have some discussion about the of committee. Of course. Um, how many meetings they might have, would they have three or four, um, and would you be the um, facilitator of the meeting, John? Because if, if Mike were to be acting chief, he'd still have the same role as all the other candidates, correct? Any other discussion? But that has to start fast. So I think that's kind of a compromise uh, that they all. Yeah, I want to I echo that. I mean, I love Donnie's idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a great idea. You know, we want to see significant collaboration. I mean, transparency and mm -hmm. harmony. You know, so if you guys can have some meetings and get some stuff done, <coughs> that'd be a good thing. Are you ready to vote? Sure. All in favor? All right. Aye. did have somewhat of a posting, but we should wait until we Where, where did this come from? I just put it together based yeah. on our multi technical process, uh, just to give you an idea exactly of how the process like. and the timeline goes. And if you want to add other information, <coughs> that, you can, but right. that, that that's just update. what's needed. You know, the uh, chief and these gentlemen can add to this if they feel sure. it's necessary. Yeah. I have another copy here. So if I can also introduce, um, the idea here, obviously, our meetings will be will be public meetings, there posted, yes. and we'd be invited. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so, um, we would. We'd be invited, and we'll be quiet. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine. That's fine. I think Bob had mentioned. Do you think you can get it done in two, three meetings? A job description. I would think so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you'll find that uh, you have a basic information. A lot of that information already pertains closely to what we do in the role plan. And I'm sure each, each member will bring a little bit more to it uh, to enhance maybe some of those uh, items that we have listed already. So I don't, I don't, I don't think we're starting from. You're not starting from brands yet. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to rush things, but we feel a sense of urgency too. I mean, we want to oh, kind of, you know. We don't want to be doing this a year from now. Still, you know, we want to get this done in 30 to 60 days, Absolutely. if it's possible. Yeah. Any other? Um, I think we've covered everything as far as that goes. Did anyone have anything else they wanted to discuss? Ultimately, the board will be the making the interviews and doing the final decisions. Then. <coughs> Do you still, I'm sorry, Go ahead. you still foresee <coughs> a panel of fire chiefs or firefighters interviewing? Do we see that as the second step? What, how do we see, or there, is it just there, going to make recommendations? It'll, it'll have to be uh, a, a step after the committee. Yeah, uh, like meeting. oral interviews, uh, and I would think, think would be important. Right, and I think the, the, the selectmen can probably at that point in time decide what they think would be best. Um, if something were to happen, the, the committee comes back and says, we all sat down for two meetings, we think this is the guy we all collectively want. That's fine. And that's it. You know? um, that'd be great if that happened. You know? Because that would indicate there's harmony amongst the troops. And everyone was supporting one party. You know, I think that'd be good. But if it comes back, you know, Okay, we had some good meetings, we had a job description, but you know, everyone's buying the spot, and someone else is going to have to make that decision. And 
you may want to go outside, but the, I don't think it's necessary, but I, you may want to do that for some other reasons. You, know, you, you may want to stay somewhat clear uh, some of the uh, you know, possible political uh, connections between candidates. Yeah, we don't need that. Well, that's not, I, I like to protect the board as best I can. <laughs> well, yeah. if, it'll add, if it'll add some levity, there is one other group where everybody that shows up wants to get elected. That's the papal conclave. <laughs> <laughs> they use a lot of prayer. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we got to get the, uh, so we'll get the stove going. going. I guess what I'm saying is it, sometimes it's difficult to select them to be considered impartial. Because well, it's a small town, we all live in this town, and we know each other. Yeah, and, and sometimes you make bad choices. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. But if I, I'm just seeing if they have three firefighters um, with the knowledge and, and know what we are about, or five, and came in and interviewed everybody, and then scored everybody, and then we can tell you. I think that would be a good tool for us. And that takes us off the hook. We chose this one because of this or that yeah, exactly. or whatever. Exactly. I don't know if you agree with that or not, but I just wanted to throw that out. So if you do two charges amongst yourselves, one job description, one <coughs> to Betty and Don, and saying, give us a process mm -hmm. for selection, yeah. or right. tools, maybe yeah, four or five of you can do that as well. Yes. Yeah. well. We're looking for an easy way out to make a decision. <laughs> you guys do all the work. That. <laughs> you guys do all the work. Okay. You're the experts. That's not true. Uh, I think we can do that. Harmonious. Okay. Well, that's it. Um, we'll adjourn. Okay. Motion to adjourn.